Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our Midweek Manor Moment here at the Antioch Missionary Baptist Church, where our pastors, Dr. Kenneth R. Kemp and Lady Velma Willoughby Kemp is our First Lady. The month of September is when we celebrate Pastor and First Lady. Uh, they've been uh, working in the vineyard of Antioch for many, many years and in pastoral leadership for the last 11 years. We want them to know how much we appreciate them for the work that they do for the kingdom and what they do for Antioch and uh, the membership and in the city of San Antonio. So it is our prayer that you um, have been visiting our Facebook page and I asked you a couple weeks ago to drop a word, a lot of encouragement, an email, send a card, just letting Pastor and First Lady know how much we appreciate all that they do for the kingdom of God. We also pray that you will join us this Sunday, 10 a.m. for the big game. Reverend Jessica is going to bring the preached word. Each Sunday, uh, the Associate Minister of Antioch have been bringing the Word of God. This is an opportunity for us to pour into our pastor that because he pours into us every Sunday. So we hope you join us for the big game, and then we hope you join us for the parade at the end at 1 o'clock. We're asking uh, the membership and friends to just drive by and say hello to Pastor and Lady Velma and wish them a happy 11th pastoral anniversary. Now, I need you to do that for me. Go to Facebook. If you haven't liked us yet, like us. I don't know why you haven't liked us yet, but like us. And then I want you to drop a word of encouragement to our pastor and first lady. Let them know that Antioch is love and that we love them. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Eternal and all wise God, how we thank you for being God. We thank you for being a hedge of protection and watching over us. We thank you for being our provider, for being our strong tower, for being steadfast, for being loving, for all that you are, God, oh, how we thank you. But most of all, we thank you that you were willing to die on an old rugged cross, not for your sins, but for our sins. So now, God, we do ask for forgiveness. There are things that we've said and done have not been pleasing in your sight. So we come confessing our sins to you and to you alone. Now, Holy Spirit, we ask that you would have your way in this virtual service. Speak to whomever you need to speak to. Do not allow your word to return into you void, but allow it to accomplish accomplish that which you've ordained it to do on this day. Now, God, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For Lord God, you are my strength and my holy redeemer. And all God's children said, amen, amen, and amen. Have your Bibles. I'd like that you would turn with me to Matthew. For those of you who have, who have been um, on this midweek manner journey with us, you know, I'm preaching a series on the Lord's Prayer. In fact, we're calling it a deeper dive into the Lord's Prayer. And today we will be on verse 11 of the sixth chapter of Matthew. Matthew 6, I'm going to read verses 9 through 13, but we're going to highlight verse 11. And the text reads in the New King James Version, In this manner, therefore pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So we've come to the fourth petition out of seven in the Lord's Prayer. Up until this point, we have covered um, the first petition, which is, Hallowed be their name. And the second petition was, uh, thy will be done. And the third, the second petition was thy kingdom come. The third petition was thy will be done. And today's petition is give us this day our daily bread. We've talked about the fact that this is uh, the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. In Luke's gospel, we have the disciples actually coming up and asking Jesus, teach us how to pray as John taught his disciples. But in Matthew, the Lord doesn't teach the prayer as a uh, an answer to a question from the, a request from the disciples. He teaches it as their teacher, their rabbi. He recognizes this is my job. I am to teach my disciples how to pray. Now there's been some discussion about is the Lord's prayer to be read verbatim or is it a model? I believe it is a, it is both. It is both a model of prayer, but it is also a prayer that we can pray to God knowing that God will hear of it. He will hear our prayers. When we first started going through the Lord's Prayer, we went through the first section. And if we noticed, everything was about God. The attention was all on God. It says, our Father, which art in heaven, that was about God. And then it was about 
your um, hallowed be thy name, the holiness of God's name. Then it talked about God's kingdom. It was about God's kingdom, not our kingdom. And then the discussion was on God's will, God's will, not our will. And it is that um, first portion that helps us understand that what Jesus is trying to teach his disciples, what Jesus wants us to know, that there's a certain way we ought to approach God. We ought not approach God first with give me, give me, give me. I need, I need, I need. I want, I want, I want. No, the first thing we have to do is recognize who God is. Recognize that it is about God's holy name. It is about God's kingdom and it is about God's will. Then we get to where we are today. Now we can ask God for something. So for the time that is before me with the aid of the Holy Spirit, I want to simply preach, give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. This is the petition where we now come to God asking for something. Um, but it's odd that we're not just, we're asking for something basic. The text says, give us this day our daily bread. Not that we can't ask God for something big, but Jesus is saying, even for your very basic need, we need to come to God. So let's just walk through these words. It says, give us. Notice it doesn't say give me. Again, this reminds us that this is communal. It is not about me and mine. It is about we and us. Jesus says, when you pray, pray this way. Give us our daily bread. So when we're praying and we're asking God to meet our daily needs, we're also asking God to meet the needs of our brothers and sisters, to meet the needs of those who have less than we do, to meet the needs of the less fortunate. So give us our daily bread. But this give is not a command. This give is a humble request. We're not demanding that God gives us anything. We are asking God. And we're going to God because we recognize that God is the source of everything we need. That's the thing I think Jesus wants us to know. That as children, we come to God as parent with the expectation that God has what we need, that there is nothing that as a child of God, we cannot go to God that God does not have. And if it is God's will, God will then provide it for us. So give us our, this day our daily bread. So we recognize who we're talking to. We're talking to God and we want God to give us, all of us, our daily bread because we are uh, one body with many members. We are in this thing together. It is not just about an individual. It is about the family of God. Remember when we first uh, delved into the Lord's Prayer, we talked about our Father. So he belongs to all of us. So when we are praying, we are to also intercede on behalf of our brothers and sisters. We ought to recognize that God is the one we come to to meet our basic need. And a need as basic as bread. So then it says, give to us, give us this day our daily bread. Now, daily is a tricky word. We understand daily, meaning give it to us just daily, each day. But the problem with the translation is this word daily only appears in the Lord's Prayer. It is nowhere else in the Bible. So there are volumes and volumes of commentators talking about, so what does this mean? What does daily mean? Does it mean every day? Does it mean sometimes? Well, the word actually translates, give us the bread that we will need for the day or tomorrow. So oftentimes we hear preach like, we just ask God for what you need today. Well, depending upon when you pray the prayer. So had the disciples been praying this prayer in the evening, they would basically say, give me bread, give me what I need for tomorrow. If they pray it in the morning, give me what I need for the rest of the day. It is not a prayer where we're asking um, for weeks and weeks and weeks out. What we're doing is trusting that God will give us what we need for that specific time. It, it brings to mind the children of Israel. Remember when the children of Israel were in the desert uh, following Moses, they had been um, released from captivity, they had been freed, but now they're moaning and complaining. Uh, we don't have anything to eat. At least we had the flesh pots back in Egypt. Back in Egypt, we had fish. Back in Egypt, we had this. 
But back in Egypt, you were enslaved, but now you're free, but you're still complaining. And they began complaining. And God says to Moses, it's in the book of Exodus 16. I hear they're complaining. I'm going to make sure they know that I am God. So at night, I'm going to send them meat. And in the morning, I'm going to send them bread. But there was a con there was a condition. God allowed the quail to fall at night and they were to only pick up what they needed for that particular day. And in the morning, manna fell. They didn't even know what it was. In fact, the word manna means, what is this? They didn't know. And God said, tell the children of Israel to gather up what they need, but don't try to save it. Don't try to store it up. Inevitably, somebody didn't follow the directions. Somebody didn't follow the playbook and they tried to save it and it would, it would stink. It would begin to rot. And when the heat of the day came, whatever manna was left on the ground, it would melt. God was trying to help the children of Israel to understand, I am your source. You don't have to save up. You don't have to, I'm, now I'm not saying don't plan, but God wanted them to understand, I'm your source of your daily bread. I will feed you from the heavens. So I want you to trust that if I give it to you on Monday, I'm going to give you enough on Tuesday. I'm going to give you enough on Thursday. It was only on Saturday that they could, it was only on Friday that they could collect extra bread because they could not do any work on the Sabbath, which was their Saturday. Jesus is teaching his disciples and he's teaching us, give us this day our daily bread. Lord, I'm trust that you're going to give me what I need to get through the day. I trust you're going to give me what I need to provide for my family. I am going to trust in you, oh God. Now, please hear me. This is not a message, and I'm not telling you not to go to work, get a job, buy your food. Because what we do understand is God provides in different ways. For the children of Israel, he allowed manna to fall from the sky. For you and I, he may have allowed you to get a job that provides and puts food on your table. He may have allowed you to stay healthy so that you could plant a garden and grow your own food. He may have allowed you to have connections with people who can provide you with the things that you need. God provides in different ways, but the, the crust of the sermon is about, and the crust of the text is, that we look to God for that provision. When we start getting into the mindset of, I can provide for myself, I don't need God, I have everything I need, that's also when you see Jesus talking about the parable of the rich man, when the rich young ruler, he said, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man. When you are rich and become self-sufficient, sometimes there's this belief that you don't need God. You don't need to pray to God for our daily bread, because we got four freezes in the basement that has everything we need in it we don't need to pray to god for our daily needs because we have all the money that we need to pay for it but jesus is teaching his disciples that we are to be dependent upon god as helpless children god is who we come to to meet our daily need now he uses the word bread bread is something very basic something that everyone would stand in need of and we're asking God, give us our daily bread. Give us the nutrients that we need for this physical body. But could we look at daily bread as something spiritual? God, give me the peace I need for the day. Give me the joy I need for today. God, give me the love that I need for the day. God, give me forgiveness in my heart for the day. Could we look at daily bread also as the thing that nourishes our soul? Remember, Jesus talked about the fact that he was the bread of life and that we were to literally feast upon his body. When we take the Lord's Supper, we recognize Jesus' body as the bread, as a symbol of the bread, and his blood, the wine or the grape juice, as a symbol of his blood. What if we pray the Lord's Prayer? Give us this day our daily bread. God, give me enough Jesus to get through the day. Give me Jesus to get through my work. Give me what I need in Jesus to help my family. Just this day, oh God. We're, we're praying to God because we recognize we are dependent. We are dependent on God. It reminds me of a story of Deacon Bass used to tell this story. For those of you who don't know, Deacon Bass was uh, a deacon at our church for Antioch for many, many years, a most beloved deacon. He was co-chairman with Deacon Levine for 20 years or more, and um, he meant so much to us. And he often taught the Thursday morning Bible study class. And Deacon Levine, uh, Deacon Bass would talk about faith, having faith in God. 
And when I read the scripture, give us this day our daily bread, I remember a story he used to tell. Deacon Bash used to say, his father would go out hunting for dinner. That's how they got their food. There wasn't a grocery store. If, if it was, it was in town. And at that point, they didn't have a car. I remember him saying they had, he remembers when they got an old beat up horse and a wagon and the children were so excited. But his dad would go out and he would go hunting. And his mother would stay home and she would begin praying. Because if they were going to eat that night, it was going to depend on God. God was going to have to bring some animal cross his dad's path. And when his father would see an animal and she could hear the gunshot, then she would start heating up the grease. She trusted God that God would give them their daily bread that day. We have now become so self-sufficient. We have excess. We have overload that we forget that we need God to provide for us daily. There was a time when our ancestors couldn't go to grocery stores. There wasn't one in, the, in their community. Even now, they're not always a great grocery store in our community. And we have people who are praying for their daily bread. But God has given us a way to provide for them. Remember, our prayer was give us. So if you and I have what we need, uh, we need to make sure somebody else has what they need. That's why the Antioch Missionary Baptist Church has kept our food bank going. Because we recognize that there are people in our community whose daily bread we have and we can provide for them. That's why Mr. Jeff has worked so hard to make sure we are protected and the communities are protected. But we are there every Wednesday making sure that people's daily bread, that they can get their daily bread from the food bank uh, at the Antioch Church and from the city's food bank uh, ministry, our daily bread. That's what we're to be asking God for, but that's also what we are supposed to be helping others to do, to get their daily bread. God provides us what we need day by day. This is not a detailed um, message. It's a simple message. Give us this day. God, I'm not gonna worry about my future. I'm going to trust you to take care of me on this day. God, I'm asking you for a basic need because I know your word says that you will supply all of my needs according to your riches and glory. So God, I'm not going to worry with you with what I want. I'm just going to ask you for what I need. And as your child, I'm going to trust that you're going to give it to me. Give us this day our daily bread. God, we're leaning and depending on you to be our provider, to be our source, to be the, the one we can come to with confidence, knowing that you hear and answer prayers. I love this petition because it, it helps us to remember how dependent we are to be on God, how we're not to lean to our own understanding, but we're to go to God for everything that we need. I love this petition because it reminds us that I'm not just to pray for my needs, but I'm to pray for the needs of my brothers and sisters, those I know and do not know. I love this petition because it reminds us that we are to look to God for our very basic need, grain, bread, the things that we need. But I love this position, petition even more because it reminds us that we're not just, we can't just, we don't just need to go to God for bread, but God needs to be our source of everything. God, I need strength to get through this day. God, I need patience to make it through my job. God, I need compassion. God, I need forgiveness. God, I need um, love. I need uh, you to give me what I need to get through this day. And when God gives us what we need to get through our day, then we can give to others to help them get through their day. Give us this day our daily bread. And remember, you and I are not to live uh, by bread alone, but we are to feast on the word of God. Every word that comes out of God's mouth, that's what we are to feast on. So when your spirit feels hungry, you've got the word. God, give me daily bread, daily feast on this word, daily spend time in this word, daily meditate on this word, and it will feed your soul. And I promise you, God will take care of your physical needs when we go into his word for our spiritual needs. Beloved, God asked us, Jesus has taught us to pray, give us this day our daily bread. It's that simple. God is the source. 
He has all we need. And as his children, all we have to do is humble ourselves and ask, and he will provide that which we need from one day to the next. We need not worry about tomorrow because tomorrow has enough trouble of his own. God, give us what we need on this day. Amen. It is my prayer that if you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that you will make a confession of faith, that you will ask Jesus to be your Lord and your Savior, that you will recognize that you are a sinner and that you need Jesus Christ in your life. If you will pray the prayer of salvation, asking him to come into your life to forgive you of your sins, believing that he is the Son of God, that he lived, died, and rose, and on the third day he got up with all power in his hands, and he is coming back. If you pray that prayer, you are saved. If you've made that confession, we ask that you would call the Antioch Missionary Baptist Church. Someone will answer the phone and direct you to a decision counselor. And we will uh, invite you into the body of Christ. If you need baptizing and you've made that confession of faith, call us at the church. Pastor Kent would love to baptize you. If you want to join the Antioch Missionary Baptist Church, please call us. We would love to have you be part of the family. And remember, brothers and sisters, there is no need to worry. We simply pray and ask God to give us what we need each day. And he is faithful and just to do just that. Amen.